Welcome to this To The Cloud video where Scott and I dive into Azure AD PowerShell and the transition from Azure AD PowerShell to Microsoft Graph PowerShell. As you may know, Azure AD PowerShell has been deprecated. The move is going to be to write everything in the Microsoft Graph PowerShell. So we dive into the terminal and uh, compare the two, explore the new commandlets, explore the Microsoft Graph and hopefully teach you a little bit about moving your PowerShell scripts from Azure AD PowerShell to Microsoft Graph PowerShell. So let's dive in. Um, so jumping over in, you'll notice the first thing is that requirement of 5.1 or later. Uh, this does work on a Mac. So if I go launch, I run the PowerShell preview because what fun is it if you don't run the preview of Pretty much everything. Of course. Um, yeah, so I'm logged in. I do already have that module installed. Um, but if you haven't, it's just that install, like you said, it's install module. Uh, we can do a whole tab complete because I love my tab completes and Microsoft Graph. And this will go out to that gallery, grab the Microsoft Graph module go ahead and get that installed. Uh, the one thing I will say that is probably the biggest transition uh, that I have found is the scopes that you were talking about in terms of giving permission to the application, uh, being able to figure all that out. You'll notice the tenant I'm actually gonna go against once we start doing this is this uh, Navuba tenant that I have I have some of these enterprise applications listed already, some provisioning stuff, some Power BI stuff. Uh, I do have the PNP Office 365 management modules, but I don't have any of the Azure AD stuff out there. Uh, so hopefully this will install. And the first thing that I did when I went and started using this was exactly what you showed, where I'd maybe go out and I'd want to connect to MG Graph. And it will go ahead and try to connect. It'll pop open a new browser window. Let me sign in. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in with this account. And it starts asking for permissions. Permission requested that Graph PowerShell it wants to at least sign in and read my profile information, maintain access to data. I'm just going to go ahead and consent on behalf of your organization and accept. Authentication complete. Great. All well and good. We're connected. Welcome to the Microsoft Graph. The first thing so, we're going to uh, do... Just a quick oh, note yeah, there. Go like, ahead. Uh, on, on the consent piece, these are all admin consent requirements. So you are going to need an administrator within that tenancy to go ahead and uh, approve those. Um, and, and that's no different than like if you wanted to maybe get started in the Graph Explorer before you came over and started doing the PowerShell side of things. Like same thing, you need to authenticate like Graph Explorer as an application or in this case, your, uh, your kind of PowerShell context. Uh, over to your tenancy. So you were able to get through that flow pretty quickly because you have rights within that tenancy to right. grant to grant that admin consent. Uh, but if like we went over to uh, another tenant, like, uh, you know, and, and I, like I was trying to do the same thing and I didn't have permissions in there. Uh, it's going to just kind of yell at me and say, sorry, no, go, go find an admin who can get you what you need. Yeah. That's a good call out. Cause I had this when we were working with a client the other day where we were used to being able to go and like connect Azure AD or connect to something. And as long as you had a certain level of admin rights, uh, you were able to just go start running the PowerShell. But the admin rights to maybe connect to Azure AD and retrieve users is not as high of a permission as you need to approve an enterprise application and grant access to certain scopes. And if you don't get all the scopes you need right away, there can be some back and forth in order to actually get all those permissions granted that you need 
with somebody high enough to go in and approve all of that. Um, it's a little, it, a little, in some cases, it's a lot more work to go in and grant all of those right permissions because even though I'm a global admin and I just connected with a global admin and approve those permissions, if I go try to do like a get MG user, it actually goes in and fails because I have insufficient privileges to complete the operation back to that whole scopes thing it's like do you have user.read.all and and how are you able yes. to do that mapping in your head of of what permissions uh or, or you know effectively like what scopes do i actually need to perform the set of operations that i want to perform within the context of this connection specifically yeah it starts yeah. to get really and- really weird really quick there is one out there, I will, it's in the documentation here, where they talk about it as you start using it, um, determining those scopes, this find MG graph command. And I would get very familiar with this, save this in a clipboard somewhere, where you can use this find MG graph command, pass it in the command you want to use, pipe that to select dash first one expand property permissions and this will give you this type of output of all of the scopes that are available that can be used or the scope permission that can be used to grant that mg user permission level uh so in this case if i go throw that over there And I'm actually going to delete off the pipe. What you're looking for with this find MG graph command is that pipe is actually going through and getting all of these permissions here underneath this get MG users. If you just do the find graph command, you'll see a lot of those different methods too that it's using. It's using a get get method. It's going to this user's endpoint or the user's user ID endpoint. Uh, So you can get more of that information about the command. If truly all you're looking for is just that permission level, uh, you can go write that permission level. So as long as I'm granted that device management apps, directory read all, directory read write all, one of these scopes, I'll be able to use this get mg user command. Uh, um, within, within the the <laughs> within the scope <laughs> that that command has been granted, so like this is I think where it starts to get uh, maybe a, a, a little weird is depending on what you want to do. Like if you're not doing something that requires say like management of Intune devices, you don't need to uh-huh. pipe in and grant yourself the scope for device management. Like if all you want to do is right. get users, you can do user dot read dot all. And you're good, ready to go. Uh, you, you know, you don't need that other kind of permission on top of it. This is the kind of you know the whole kitchen <laughs> uh, when maybe all you need is just one or two pots or pans out of the cabinet, kind of thing. Right, and where it starts getting tricky, this I would say is the other aspect to this is now. Let's say I want to get an MG user. And I want to start working with my users, but I also want to go start working with groups in Azure AD. If I want to work with a group, I need, I can do it with directory read all, directory read write all, which are two of those permissions up here. Or I can do a group group read all, and I could do a user read all. So at this point in time, based on the commandlets that end up going into my PowerShell script that I'm writing, do I grant a bunch of different scopes or do I go find the least common denominator that applies to all of them? Um, In terms of maybe I just grant directory read all so that I don't have to go in and grant both a user read-all and a group read-all. 
And now I want to go I've start seen, writing like, to groups. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen good guidance out there on on what that actually looks like. Like lots of the examples, they, they, they tend to flip flop uh, between the more constrained permission set versus the the wider permission set. Yeah, and I don't see this as one of them. It used to be set update. group. I think now it's update mg group. Where if I'm doing an update now, I need to have that read write all. Um, so going back to now I've started to figure out what is that permission level I need. Um, I can go in and grant it. Before I do that, let's jump back to enterprise integration or enterprise applications. You'll actually see now that I refresh this, I have this Microsoft graph PowerShell. Um, uh Oh, and I get the spinning beach ball. It's all starting to melt application. So, this is where when you showed me that process of going through and registering the application, I was like, I've never had to do that because that initial <laughs> I just connection. Go down this path. Yeah. Right. Goes and starts doing it already. So I could go start looking at permissions. And this is where that access is denied, where I do have um, that user read. This one in theory should have, I think I can maybe just read my own profile with this one. I can't read. Everybody Correct. else's is yeah. not a direct. Yeah, read. so, it's so just you can go to like my you user. can go to the me endpoint, but you can't go to say like the overall users endpoint. Kind right. Of thing. So it's just granted those initial permissions. Um, in order to get the rest of those, what I can do is I can actually go back to my connect, and one of the parameters that I can pass in now is this scopes. Uh, so we have started determining that in order to get my users, I need this user read all. And I'm going to grab that one. And you can pass in multiple scopes. So I can do a user read all. And let's say I know I don't need a directory read all. I just want users and groups. Um, if I go grab these, and I can pass in multiple scopes, put the comma, de, I don't even know what word that is. It's comma delimited, comma delim the delimiter. delineation, yes. delimiter, the comma <laughs> delim delineation, it's not delineation. Put a comma in there and do another connect. This will prompt back, prompt that login dialog, prompt another tab. And now when I go log in this time, I actually have a lot more permissions that it will ask me to consent to. Yeah. So, so eventually it's, I guess that's the other thing with uh, the permissioning and kind of the admin consents is it's really a consent per permission. So like every time you pass in a new permission that you don't have consent to, and that hasn't been granted that admin consent, so like you, you've got the you, you know auth inbox up there, and hey, I'm going to uh, consent on behalf of my organization kind of thing. Uh, every single one of those that's new that hasn't been granted to that application, uh, that Azure AD enterprise application, the, the registered app, then you've got to go through this flow every time. Um, so, so you might want to account for that in, uh, say, like automation. Like this probably isn't something you've ever really had to, uh, you, you know, I, I certainly <laughs> think about these things with like the Azure AD command. Let's like, hey, I'm going to write this script that manages uh, onboarding new users, doing initial license assignment, all those kinds of things. What are all the permissions that I need to be able to do that on day one so I can go grant consent to you all of those at once? Because if I miss one or a new one is added or something like that, all of a sudden your whole automation just kind of blows up. Like it, it can't run anymore. Exactly. And that's what I've hit. Or, you, yeah, do you want to go add something new to your automation? You have to remember that you can't just add it. You have to go make sure that those permissions are there. Um, so that authenticated com authentication completed. If I go refresh this now, once it actually takes effect, there it goes. You'll see now I can read all users for a profile. Full profiles, I can read all groups, 
So if I go back to my PowerShell window now, this time if I do the get mg user, get mg user, it actually has those permissions to go at that endpoint, go and grab all of those different users out of that tenant. Um, same thing, I went in and I'm able to get my groups now so I can see all of those. But as soon as I would go in and try to update an MG group, um, it's going to ask for group ID and some other stuff here. Where's a group ID I can use? Uh, it's not going to be able to update them because I only granted those read permissions. Um, so to your point, now I'd have to go back in. Uh, <laughs> it's like playing whack-a-mole. Oh, it actually, all but I didn't on. try to update anything. What can I update on a group? Probably the name. Is there a name parameter on there? Mail, team, OneNote. We'll make it mail enabled. Mail enabled, true. Mail enabled isn't a Boolean, it's just a dash. Ooh, maybe it's letting me update it, which would be odd. It shouldn't. Uh, yeah, because I didn't grant read write to the groups, I don't think. Um, but that gets to that point of as you go through and do all these different things, you may have to go in and change those scopes, adjust those. The nice thing is once you add them, uh, the next time I would go through and connect, because consent has already been granted, I'm not going to have to go in and pass those scopes through every time. Yeah, just don't go uh, delete that application registration. <laughs> right. So if I would do, for example, disconnect MG, MG graph, I log out, I'd try to get MG users now, I'm not connected authentication is needed. So this time I could just go through and I could do a connect MG graph. It's still going to walk me through potentially that prompt. It may pick up that I already logged in. We'll have to see what happens here. Um, yep. You know, sign in again, pick my account again, give my password again. I don't get any prompts. I'm not asking for any new scopes. All the scopes that um, I didn't pass in any new scopes, so it's not prompting for any. I already have those scopes that I used in the past, so I could go do that get MG user again. And it would go grant them all. I'm not going to have to go, like I said, I don't have to go re-request those. I already have them. They've already been granted. So the other option is with this is you go find that highest scope level. This is by far probably not security best practice. Grant the highest scope <laughs> level and not. say I'm done with this. Forget <laughs> about it. I don't have to worry about it anymore because I've granted every possible right to that graph PowerShell. Hopefully you enjoyed diving into Azure AD PowerShell and Microsoft Graph PowerShell. If you do want to see the full hour-long recording, feel free to join our podcast membership site. This video channel, this YouTube channel, is a spinoff from the MS Cloud IT Pro podcast. If you sign up for a membership over there by going to msclouditpro.com slash membership, uh, link in the description below, uh, you can get access to the full hour-ish recording of these to the cloud videos. You'll get access to watch them and participate in the live recording of these, as well as the weekly live recording of the podcast, uh, and access to our private Discord server, where we have conversations about all things Microsoft Cloud related. So again, don't forget to subscribe, be notified about future video clips on this channel or future videos on this channel, as well as check out the membership site. Again, mscloud.itpro.com slash membership.